time and I was trying to trim it back as best I could. But the title of my talk is Adequate and Equitable Special Senior Services in the Context of the HSE Progressive Disability Services Initiative. This is a piece of work that I undertook as part of a dissertation as part of a Masters in Healthcare Management years ago. Um, the purpose of that work was to consider the government health strategies at the time, to consider progressive disability services for children and young people, and to see or to assess the state of play for special senior services. I suppose by way of background I should mention I, I work for a department within Main Ireland called CTEC and we're a special seating service provider. Uh, what special seating is, is it's adaptive seating for children and adults with physical disabilities, wheelchair users, who have significant postural um, compromise, whose postures need to be corrected, um, supported, and pressure managed in the seating position. Uh, so, what I was looking at, I, I, I had this perception, I'm sorry, I'm stalling because I'm jump, jumping ahead of my slides, but I had a perception that there was an imbalance of special seating service provision in Ireland, and I wanted to assess that in so far as I could in the time frame of the project that I was assigned. Uh, where I was coming from on it, or the, the approach I was taking to it was, as I say, to look at the government health strategies, specifically um, the, or the original health strategy, health in the wider dimension, that shaping a healthier future, quality and fairness, but most specifically the primary care strategy of 2001, which is being implemented now through the Progressive Disability Services Initiative. And the object objectives of the primary care strategy were to improve integrate and offer person-centered services, and have the capacity and infrastructure of primary care to provide appropriate care in the appropriate setting and to reduce health inequalities. So I was trying to assess, based on my background knowledge and experience and the work of this project, are these being applied in the specific sector in which I work, which is special safety service provision. Progressive Disability Services for Children and Young People are generally referred to as PDS now, so it, it's, I describe it as, as one of the biggest changes to have in the healthcare service since its inception, and it's related to, if you like, the decongregation of disability services bringing children and adults out into the community setting and specific children. And the objective is to have one clear pathway of to services for all, to have effective teams working in partnership with parents, to resort, use resources to the greatest benefit of all, and that children and families should have services available wherever they live. And this is the reason of it, the written as well. That children and families should have services available wherever they live. In relation to specialist supports, the document states that community health organizations and local implementation groups must identify available services and skills in their area and determine how specialist supports will be developed, delivered, maintained, and shared. And this is part of the objective of my work. So in that strategy, what you have is you've got primary care teams supported at network level by network disability teams, supported again at subspecialist or special service level by services such as ours, which is special service. So this is, this is where we fit. At the moment, these areas are being rolled out across the country to vary levels of effectiveness, these levels as well. But this area is, at the moment uh, hasn't really been addressed nationwide. So to come back, this is why I found I was giving ahead of myself, what is special seating? Special seating are special seating supports that are made to measure the spoke seating supports in the specific individuals for which they're designed. And the primary objectives are the postural correction and pressure leaving. And these two objectives are diametrically imposed. On one level, you cannot apply the corrective positioning without applying the pressure. And then you're constantly trying to ensure that the pressure is minimized and the pressure and distribution is optimized. My perception at the time was that seating services in Ireland developed in an ad hoc manner over a span of about 25 years, that there's a mix of private, public and voluntary organisations involved in special seating service provision, that there are scattered services and that service provision is often isolated. Where am I coming from with this? Well, here's a chart of enable Ireland centres around the country shown in the orange dots and central media including for CRC centres shown in the blue dots. I am based in CTEC here and we provide outreach services in Tala, Kildare and Wicklow. We also, Sandy Mount is right next door to us, so we refer to it as an outreach service, even though it's only a few meters away. So collectively then, sorry, that's our service provision. Then, north of the Liffey, the Central Remedial Clinic, and they provide services, satellite clinics in Tala, in uh, Skullmakura, in Kantara, in Skullmakura. And that 
we, if you like, we kind of cover the southeastern region and they kind of cover the northeastern region. They also have satellite clinics in Waterford and in England. We then have an out, what we call an outreach clinic. The satellite clinic is permanently based there. An outreach clinic is periodic. So we travel every two months to Kerry and find a clinic to the Kerry region as well. Then you have uh, an enabled area centre in Cork, but it's more prepared with the HSC local services to provide special seating in that region. And in Galway, it's exclusively HSC who provides special seating. And outside of that, you don't have official or governmental coverage. Now, we're an NGO, a non governmental organisation, a voluntary organisation. But outside of this area, there's no official approach to the provision of a special scheme. What you do have is a number of private providers based in Dublin, Sligo, and Cork. And even in these areas, I've heavily relied on these providers. So my hypothesis was therefore that there exists an inequitable level of service, special scheme service provision across Ireland. My objectives were to identify the level of need for and supply of wheelchairs and special seating, to determine the level of the perceived adequacy of special seating service delivery, and to investigate interregional variability of the same. So the first thing was to estimate the need for WSAT as a, coin, a term coined by um, Rosie Gower, who works in the University of Limerick. In her research, it stands for wheelchair and seating assistive technology, so it's encompassing both the wheelchair chair and seating provision. To estimate the need for WSAT nationally and parallel this internationally, estimate the supply of WSAT um, through various different means and to assess the perceived adequacy of WSAT and specific special seating provision. I have to say at the outset there were a huge number of limitations to my research, so I welcome it challenged. I would love if someone would take this up and repeat it and correct me on it. But of the limitations, it was a minor dissertation part fulfillment of the master. So this wasn't a full master's, so it wasn't a PhD piece of work. It was a 14 week project. There's very little published data, so not that the, the, the estimations are, are quite crude. I've, I've scanned over them, but they are quite crude. The sampling was a convenient sample taken from therapists with training and experience in WSAT provision. And they, in effect, are a proxy sample for families and recipients of these services. So that in itself is a downfall of the world. There was underrepresentation in some regions in the, in the responses, particularly in the south of the country. Some people responded uh, to the questionnaires, but they didn't respond fully to them. Um, but previous work focused on outputs rather than effectiveness, and there's need for more widespread use and more numerical measures. So these are all the limitations of the work, and I, I do understand it might be challenged. But notwithstanding these, there was still some problems down to there. So, through various different sources, I was able to find, if you like, a rule of thumb that 10% of the population has a disability, and 1% of the population, 10% of that population are major users. So 1% of the population are major users. So in nine, and we've seen talks previously about the aging population, so that number is likely to increase in the future. So we're talking about an approximate wheelchair need of 40,000 wheelchairs last year. Um, in terms of special seating, this is much more hazy. So, sorry, in terms of what we said, you see those figures correlating in terms of world, US, UK, and Ireland. So, you're, we're converging around this 1%. In terms of special seating, this is a much more tricky calculation. The National Physical Sensory Disability Database gave a figure of about 37% of wheelchair users requiring special seating. But those figures were sorely lacking in a number of respects. A very crude estimate, this is one I came up with myself, was to put, take the HSC seating versus wheelchair spend, so a very crude estimate based on the amount of money spent on special seating versus wheelchairs, and that brought up a figure of 44%. I had previously done a master's in 2001, and in the course of that, I came up with a figure of 61% of wheelchair users requiring some level of special seating. So that gives us a value of 24,000 people nationally. And CSO figures would indicate that of 26,000 40,000 to 40,500 wheelchair users, 27,000 almost require special seating of some sort. So that gives us a figure of 27,000 nationally. So I concluded that up to 27,000 people nationally have a special seating requirement, and up to 40,000 people nationally could be wheelchair users. Breaking this down then into the regions of the different HSE regions, the figures are given there as a breakdown. So I produced a self-completion questionnaire. I piloted it with the Committee of the Irish Pastoral Mobility Network. I circulated it by email with a cover letter. And the convenient sample was of people who had attended CTEC training in pastoral management. Now, I would have preferred to have pulled the Irish Pastoral Management Network, 
but they were in the process of doing their own questionnaire at that point in time, so it was constrained in that respect. So it was a convenient sample. Nevertheless, the sample was 131 people, and the response rate was 31 percent with 41 responses, which is a respectable response rate for, for uh, a questionnaire. This is the breakdown of the regional responses. The Dublin Northeast region was underrepresented, so what I did was I collated the Dublin regions together in terms of my analysis. Also, the West, sorry, I said it's actually the West was underrepresented as well. But what I found in terms of results were that there was a mix, as I had suggested, between HSE, voluntary organisations, and private providers of special seating. And globally, 57% of people believe responded that seating, special seating service provision was adequate in their region, where 43% said it was not. But here you see the interregional variability. In the Dublin regions, it was much higher satisfaction level than elsewhere. In terms of requirement and delivery, what we see here is about two thirds of people who are requiring it were actually in receipt of it. Sorry? In terms of those receiving it, again, huge interregional variability. 95% of those requiring it in the Dublin regions are receiving it, whereas in the south, we were down to about a third of those identified as it. In terms of the aspects of special seating provided, globally 94% were getting assessment, 80% were getting design and manufacture of bespoke solutions, 92% were getting seating modifications, which would be a bit simpler than this sort of solution, and 90% were getting specialist advice and off the shelf seating solutions. But again, you see huge interregional variability, much higher satisfaction levels in the Dublin regions and much lower further away from the capital. Looking at the the satisfaction, the, the uh, wheelchair spent per person and the seating spent per person, you see comparatively higher spending per person, per population in the Dublin regions than in the other regions. So what this is identifying is that there's a higher rate of, higher level of satisfaction where there's a higher rate of spend on equipment. So in summary, an estimate of 40,000 people in Ireland with wheelchairs, up to 27,000 in special seating supports, Special seating is provided through HSE NGOs and private operators, and nationally, special seating services are provided to approximately two, th two thirds of people identified as needing them. These figures being highest in the Dublin area and lowest in the HSE centre. So, in terms of quantitative findings, the overall perceived adequacy of service varies highest in Dublin coast, lowest in the south. The variation of service provision and access to various elements appears to correlate to regional variations in HSE spending. That's the quantitative feedback. In terms of qualitative feedback, waiting times for prescription delivery and provision of seating were the number one issue rates. So, a quantitative piece, and then at the end of the questionnaire, the qualitative piece for quantitative feedback. Funding and resources was the next issue raised. Localization of service delivery, so people having to travel to receive their service. So that's totally flying in the face of the state names of the PDS initiative. And more training needed for all stakeholders and standards of practice needed to identify best practice in the area. So these are the five highest themes that came out of the qualitative field. So in conclusion, there appears to be an apparent inequity in the level of special seating service provision across the country. There appears to be a correlation between the level of service provision and HSE spending on the, on the, in the area. And there appears to be a correlation between perceived adequacy of services and HSE spending on green and special seating system technology. So the recommendations are that there will be a consistent level of adequacy across regions. The critical mass has, identified, has been identified for one specialist service to to between a half and one million population. And that, in my view, there should be regional specialist services incorporating suitably qualified multidisciplinary teams working to common standards of practice to provide support to primary care teams and networks at the local level in line with the state and government's primary care strategy. So there needs to be adequate infrastructure as well to undertake the bespoke equipment design manufacture modification of the repair. So you need technical facilities, you need the, the, the professional expertise, the interdisciplinary expertise, and you also need the technical facilities to be able to undertake the identified modifications. So my proposal would that we, would, is that we would move from this sort of a scenario to a planned, structured, strategic scenario where you'd have two primary centres in the Dublin region, one in the south, one in the west, and one in the northwest and with catchment areas. You could have satellite clinics, and ideally, where the catchment areas intersect, you could have cooperation between the two, the, 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 the intersecting regions. And potentially, one 
post put in place to overview, to oversee the implementation of the strategy. So, in summary, I'd just like to acknowledge the contribution from my employer, Enable Ireland, the IPA, where I was doing the last at the time, and my uh, supervisor, Dr. Fiona Kiel, and uh, Rosie Yard, who I actually already who has been a PhD in this area, and whose, whose work kind of gave me a springboard into my project. That's my presentation. Thank you.